Good afternoon, all of you. I'm Yogendra Patwardhan, and uh, I'm looking after emerging technologies in ABB India. I don't think I need to introduce ABB India here as a company because ABB has been in India for more than 50 years. And I think most of the people in power sector, they know ABB quite well. So here the purpose of the presentation would be mainly that how do we see the future? And which are the products and technologies which will really impact the customers in the coming years? So we will talk more on that. It's working? OK, so this is how our presentation will go through. So I'll first talk about what the future will be like, what will be the technologies, and which are the high impact technologies which we feel in the coming five to 10 years will have a significant change. And I will talk something on the digital substation, which we feel is a great technology and which will have a big impact on the power sector in the coming years. Okay, it jumps. Okay, so if we look at the future, this is what it is going to look like. One is we will have big changes in terms of digitalization. And there, this is the IoT with services and people. And this will have a lot of change in the power sector. We will also have the residential rooftop microgrids, nanogrids coming into picture. So more and more renewables will get added. And this renewable integration will pose more bigger challenges for the power utility. Similarly, energy storage and power quality that is going to play a significant impact. And the business models are going to change. Already we see new requests coming from the customers. So there are people who say whether you will do something based on revenue. There are some people who say whether you will give something on lease. So these are changes which we find which will impact both the sites quite well. So when we talk of smart grids, these are all the technologies that we see. And if you really look at it, we have variety of technologies in smart grids. If you look at the distribution automation, the microgrids, we talk of communications. We are also, we had a session in the morning on smart cities, wherein we talked about what are the things in smart cities that we can do. Asset health management, shore to ship power. So these are all technologies which are as a part of smart grid. So we come into picture where, let us say, you know, something more than the meter part. Meter is, of course, the base part, and that is very much required and critical for the power utilities. But apart from that, there is a, also much more to the smart grids what comes into picture. EV charging is another thing which will play a very significant impact in the future. So I'm now going to talk on basically four technologies which we feel will have a lot of impact in the coming years. First is microgrids. Microgrids, ABB has got containerized solutions wherein we can have different sources of powers like solar, wind, you could have uh, batteries, all this put together, you could balance the thing. So you could have several controllers, you could have a master controller communicating with the master controller and you can manage the grid in a much better shape with the help of these kind of microgrids. We have microgrids ranging from capacities of a few kilowatts. Ideally, you could say around 50 kilowatts. And you could go right up to megawatts based on these kind of so solution is scalable. We can have solutions given from 10 feet container right up to 40 feet container. So you could really expand the solution. And most of these microgrids, these are custom built microgrids. So we need to understand the load requirements of the customer and then propose a proper solution to the customer. So microgrids is one thing which I, I think somebody also presented on the Andaman, Nicobar, and Port Blair, and things like that. But apart from islands, we are also looking at rural villages. So let us say you have a very small village with around 300, 400 people. And the requirements of the rural village are mainly in terms of, let us say, the water pumps, the electric lighting, what they want, the mobile charging, what they need, so this has got a significant impact on the people of that village. 
So we are also talking to various companies wherein you can have the corporate social responsibility funds used for these kind of technologies. I do agree that with this kind of thing, you could not take it to a very large volumes or something like that. But to start with, this can be a good starting point that yes, the initial capex can be done with the help of CSR funding from the companies and then the revenue part can be paid by the villages. And there are various NGOs who work along this lines and they can do, and most of the NGOs experience what they are saying is basically the villagers are ready to pay for the revenue part. It's not a big problem or something like that. The initial capital expense is an issue. So that is how we look at microgrids. In terms of e-mobility, because we have carbon emission as an issue, especially in India, and we see that the EV charging as well as the bus charging, both will have a very significant role in the future. We have orders from countries like Estonia, wherein you know we have supplied something like 180 electric charges all across the country, and the electric cars are getting charged with these kind of charges. So we have both AC-DC chargers, and you could have these chargers installed at various places. Maybe in India, what we feel is to start with, we could start it on a very small scale. We could start in a f some townships or something like that, wherein you, know, you could have only a few electric cars. But I think what will happen is as the years go by, the number of electric cars will increase, and the need of these chargers will also increase. Similarly, we have a bus charging facility, which is basically a flash charging facility. Okay? So EV charging today, with the EV chargers that ABB supplies, we can charge an electric car in less than 15 minutes. So you could really view it as good as going to the petrol pump, fueling your car, and going ahead. Yes, it is still not as fast as that. But I think the amount of time probably we spend in the queue, probably it, if we add all that, it will equal to this. Okay? Similarly, if you look at bus charging or the flash charging thing, the buses can be charged in a span of 15 seconds when the commuters are getting in and getting out of the bus. And we have an example of this. We have an order from Geneva. Geneva bus or the public transport earlier used to have all cables on top. Now you don't see any cables there. Okay? You have only electric flash charging facility provided at around 14 stops wherein these flash chargers, when the bus goes and stops or halts in the stop, the flash charger comes from the top, it will charge the bus within a span of 15 seconds, the bus moves ahead till the time it reaches the next charging point. So this is also having great uh, future and we feel that most of the public transportation issues what we have, there is solution hidden in this, we have to really use this more and more. Digital substations is another technology which will have a significant impact for the power sector. So digital substations, we think of it in terms of two different uh, philosophies. One is you could think of a digital substation as an entire substation. So you could think of an asset health center, you could think of all your transformers, breakers, everything with sensors and sending a lot of data and you could get that. Okay. Another way you could think of it is today there is a lot of copper which is used between the control relay panels and the switch yard. And you have a lot of safety issues because of that. Well, with digital substation, what we see is we can have a merging unit which stands in the switch yard. It takes the inputs from the CTPTs and it gives a fiber optic cable output or a light output directly on the fiber, which can come to the IEDs which are there in the control room. So with this, your lot of safety issues are resolved your engineering becomes better, you have software control. So all these things help really the power sector to advance. Mo also more or less what is happening is that the new engineers who are coming, they are more software focused, so it becomes better for the power sector to retain the talent also what they have with them. Last I would say is communication. In communication we have solutions in both wired as well as the wireless uh, kind of solutions. Wired we have basically the digital power line carrier wherein the existing power line can be used by the utilities and today we can give you speeds right up to 256 kilobit per second wherein you know you could have the existing lands connected over the power line wherein you don't have fibers okay wherever you have fibers of course most of the customers i see here like tata power we have cesc 
we have Reliance who are already using ABB's fiber optic uh, solutions which are based on SDH and as the time goes we see that this will get migrated to MPLSTP in the future because you will need more power of Ethernet really coming in those kind of solutions. So retaining everything what you have of the protection part you can take the advances of Ethernet, benefits of Ethernet and upgrade your solution. So that is possible. Similarly wireless broadband we have wherein we have broadband outdoor routers which are in unlicensed band. So 2.5 gigahertz as well as 5.8 gigahertz. We can have solutions of backhaul uh, the DA applications especially for the distribution sector and especially this becomes a single network multiple application kind of a scenario. So as the applications keep coming in the future the same communication platform can serve you for the future. So let, let us say somebody talked about workforce management. So you want to add that application, you could add that application on the platform. This is how a digital substation looks like. And I would uh, request all of you that we have a stall here in the Sweden uh, pavilion, wherein we have given a virtual reality display of a digital substation. If you take two minutes out and visit that particular stall, you will be really getting a feel of what is digital substation and what does it look like in 3D. Now digital substation is something which is not something we are only talking about but if you look at 2016 we also received the first order for digital substation. This is techno park basically in the state of Kerala. This is the biggest IT park wherein for a 110 kV substation for three bays they have gone for a digital substation. So this order is already with ABB. Thank you. Any